Your eyes in court. Be seated. This is case number 1795 and the guy's name is Aaron and he is an alleged thief. The court has decided, can you please remove your mask? Mm -hmm. Remove your mask. Mm -hmm. Extra three years for not removing your mask. <laughs> Do you want another two? Uh, I say, I, uh, 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 thank you, thank you. I'm minus one year. Two years in court. Mr. Judge, can I put on my sunglasses because I can't see? You may put on your glasses. And my name is not can Aaron. Can you see? I can see my name is not Aaron. My name is Pink. Thanks, no, your name is Aaron. According to this docket, your name is Aaron. Are you ready? I am ready, your honor. Can you see with those glasses? I, I can see. How many fingers is this? Three fingers. No, this is two fingers. An extra year for you, but for judge, being naughty. Judges, you got big fingers. It's not my fault, they look like three. This is two fingers. Okay, judge. Say two fingers. Two fingers. You say two fingers. One, two. Thank you. So, tell me, what were you doing the night of the 7th of April, half past six, in Mrs. Johnson's house? I, 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 was, I was looking for, um, I was just looking for... I don't want... I, 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 I want clear answers. Continue. I was just trying... I was cleaning the counter. I was cleaning and, and trying to help the house be clean. According to the cameras, you were looking in the cupboards. You said you were cleaning on the cupboards. You, sir, are a liar. An extra three years in jail. Come on, judge. I couldn't go for an extra three years. I was telling the truth. I was in the cupboards because they were dusty. Were they dusty? Yes. So if the cupboards was dusty, what were you doing with Kellogg's cornflakes in your hands? The Kellogg's were dusty as well. Was the Kellogg's dusty? The cornflakes, they were deliciously dusty. Why were you looking inside of the box? To, to see if there was any, any cornflakes that needed to be cleaned directly by my hands. Uh, and my tongue actually cleans cornflakes really well. I'm not too sure if this judge is happy with this defendant today. So the judge has decided that you, sir, are lying. I am not lying. They know that I'm telling the truth. The witnesses over there know that I'm telling the truth. I will let the kids decide. How many years should he spend in jail? Should it be two years? If you want him to spend two years in jail, everybody scream two, and you shake it like this, all right? Two, I think someone said three years. No, they said zero years. They said zero years. Are you sorry for what you did the night of the 15th? I am not sorry for cleaning the counters and the cornflakes with my tongues. But you will never be stealing again. I was not stealing. They saw me. I was not stealing. And now you got me with this, this, these things around my arms. I can't even be set free. All right. Do you understand that it is wrong to steal? I do, Mr. Judge. Do you understand that it is wrong to scratch where you're not supposed to scratch? I do understand, Mr. Judge. All right. I want you to say, I am sorry. I think I have learned today that the judge knows what is right and what is wrong and what I did was wrong. Mr. Judge, I am sorry. That's right. So now, sir, I will take off your cuffs and I will tell you about a story in the Bible about judges. I love stories in the Bibles. I'm looking forward to, tell, to hearing stories in the Bible. Thank you very much, judges. You could buy me fancy cars, dress me up the thing, fly me around the world in my own private Pain. You could give me money, you could give me fame, but I wouldn't trade anything for Jesus.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Journey Today Show. My name is... Quiet in the court, quiet! I am the Honorable Judge David, and I will be presiding over this episode of the Journey Today Show. Ma'am, please state your full name for the record. Um, well, it's Casey Jordan, but you already know that. Why are you dressed Objection! like Objection! A... I'll be the one asking the questions. Miss Casey Jordan, if that is your name, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Of course, but seriously, David, we've got to stop messing around and get the episode started. Overruled! Is it true that on the morning of... Uh, right now, you parked yourself in the seat on the right side of the JTS desk? Uh, yeah, I guess that's where I'm sitting right now. And isn't it true that there's a no parking sign clearly displayed on that side of the desk? What? Oh, come on, you've got to be kidding me. You just put that there. Miss Casey Jordan, I find you guilty of parking in a no parking zone. You are sentenced to bear like a sheep for the remainder of this episode. Court is adjourned. Seriously, David, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I meant to say was, that's ridiculous. Oh man, come on. Actually, on second thought, we're never gonna get through this episode with you bang like a sheep. So for my final act as Honorable Judge David, I sentence you to time served. You can talk like a person again. Whoa, that was really weird. What in the world were you thinking? Yeah, I, I guess that was a really bad idea. Seriously, though, why in the world are you dressed up like a judge? Well, that's what we're talking about today. The Book of Judges. Oh, do you mean the Book of Judges from the Bible? Yeah. So I figured what better way to introduce the episode than to dress up and act like one of the judges. Oh, I see. I should probably clear something up, though. The judges in the Bible were different than the judges today. They didn't sit in courtrooms, and they certainly didn't sentence people to bang like a sheep for parking in a no-parking zone. Uh, well, what about driving a one-hump camel in a two-hump camel lane? No, that was never a thing. Besides, the judges in the Bible didn't oversee trials. Instead, a judge was a leader who God had chosen to guide his people in the right direction. They were more like godly rulers than courtroom judges. Uh, okay, I think I get that. But in the previous episode, the Israelites had a guy named Joshua leading them. What happened to him? Great question. He died of old age. In fact, he was 110 when he died. But here's the really sad part. After Joshua died, the people of Israel kind of forgot about God and started doing evil things. That's what our Bible story for today is all about. Uh, hey, you know what I think we should do? Let's read the story for ourselves. Uh, so how about this? In just a second, press pause on the video, then open your Bible and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, press play, and we'll see you back here. Hey everybody, welcome back. Man, that's so sad. It really is. And those verses we just read pretty much sum up what happens in the book of Judges. The people of Israel wander away from God, and because of that, their enemies attack and defeat them. Then God sends a judge, or a leader, to lead them back to God. That's right. Uh, but then, when the judge dies, the people return to doing evil things until God sends another judge to lead them back. Yeah, and every time they follow God and do things his way, they live in peace. Peace, dude. But when they don't follow God, they get destroyed by their enemies. <laughs> over and over, they go back and forth. They followed God. 
Peace, dude. And then they didn't. Ah! Then they followed God. Peace, dude. Then they didn't. Ah! Then they followed God. Peace, dude. Then they didn't. Ah! Then they followed God. Peace, dude. Then they didn't. Ah! They did this back and forth, over and over, for more than 300 years. Yeah. In all, God sent at least 14 different judges to lead the people back to him. And the judges weren't all men either. In fact, the fourth judge of Israel was an awesome woman named Deborah. Isn't that interesting, though, that every time the people of Israel followed God and did things his way, they lived in peace. But whenever they did things their own way, they had trouble. That is interesting. And I think it's exactly the same for us. In fact, I want to show you what I mean with a simple little challenge. Here's what I'm going to do. In just a second, I'm going to throw these Skittles in the air. All we have to do, Casey, is avoid getting hit by them. Now, the person who gets hit the least is the winner. Okay, so what, we just have to avoid as many of them as possible? Sure, you can give that a try. Wait, what is this? Do I get one of those? Nope. On your mark, get set, go! So, Casey, how'd you do? Um, not so well. Really? Because I feel like I did pretty well. Uh, hey, Producer Jordan, can you play that back in slow motion to see who won? Yeah, it looks like I won. Um, yeah, that's because you basically have a shield on your head. You're exactly right. And that's what it's like when we live under God's plan and do things God's way. Take a look at today's Bible verse. It says, God's way is perfect. The word of the Lord doesn't have any flaws. He is like a shield to all who go to him for safety. Psalm 1830. You see, God's way is perfect, and when we follow him, he's like a shield that protects us. That's what we saw in the book of Judges. And just like in the book of Judges, when we do things God's way, it leads to peace. It really does. And you know what? That makes me think of a question. What do you think it means for a kid to live in peace? What does that look like? Press pause. And discuss. Hey everybody, welcome back. When you live in peace, it means that you don't feel worried or afraid. It also means that you get along with the people around you. When we live our lives the way God wants us to, when we do things His way instead of our own, it helps us avoid trouble and live in peace. You're right. Unfortunately, that can be kind of hard sometimes. Sometimes we can be like the Israelites. We don't want to do things God's way. God's way is to be patient with others, but sometimes we just want to blow up at our brother or sister. Yeah, and God's way is to put others first, but sometimes we just want to be selfish. Yeah, and God's way is to forgive people when they hurt us, but sometimes we just want to hold on to that grudge and keep on being angry at them. 
You know, doing things God's way isn't always easy. But when we pray to God and ask him for help, he gives us the strength to make the right choice and to follow him. That is so true. And I think that's a great way to end today's episode. Um, David, what's going on? Well, Casey, it looks like you're getting towed. Uh, don't worry though. I play a judge on TV. I'll get you out of this. Bye, everybody! That's so cool. No, it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> promise never to be naughty again. I will never ever be naughty again. Thank you. No years in jail. Thank you so much guys for choosing that I go zero years in jail and today's story is actually an amazing story because it's very similar to what just happened with yes with Judge Jeremy. That's right. And it's a story about people called what? Judges. Yes. In fact, one of the judges in the Bible was actually a woman. Yes. Her name was Deborah. Ah, oh, Deborah. Wow. Can they say Deborah? Let's try to see if they can say it. I can, can't hear them, Aaron. Can you say Deborah at three? One, two, three. three. Deborah. What was the judge's name? Deborah. Well done, you guys are amazing, but here's a cool thing. The judges in the Bible, it's an entire book in the Bible, and the judges were of the people that were assigned to decide what was right and what was, was wrong. wrong. And the people of Israel never knew what was right and what, what was, was wrong. wrong. So they needed who? The judges. To tell them what was right and, and what, what was wrong. wrong. But you know what's interesting about the people of Israel? They're just like me, Mr. Pink Panther. Yes. As soon as the judge is not in a room and they can't see the judge, guess what they did? They would go and try to do what is wrong. Yes. They would try to steal and they will do all the wrong thing that God has told them not to do. Yes. And God will choose a judge that he would send over to them. That's right. To tell them what you are doing is wrong. wrong. Right. And then guess what would happen? They will listen to the judge and then when the judge will not be around, what yeah. will they do again? They will be naughty. Again, when the judge was not around, they will be naughty. And the judge, God will send another judge again. Yes. And so in the Bible, we have many judges who came to tell the people of Israel what was right and what, what was, was wrong. wrong. But guess what kids, nowadays, we don't really, God doesn't really send judges to us and That's you know right. why? Because he's given us something called the Bible. So that we can find out what, what is, is right and what is wrong. The question is, do you think, Judge Jeremy, that the kids read their Bibles? If they don't read their Bibles, then that is wrong. Absolutely. If you don't read your Bible, that's not the best or wisest thing to do. So yes. you gotta read your Bible so that you can find out what is right and what, what is wrong. Come on kids, this is amazing. We are so glad that you join us for the story today yes. about a book in the Bible called Judges. And there are many, many judges and one of them was a girl. And can all the girls in the room go with your, with your, with your hand like this, can you go? Come on, all the girls in the room, all the girls. In a room, all the girls. In a room, all the girls. Now the other end. In a room, all the boys. In a room, all the boys. In a room, all the boys. Now, last question that I've got for you, Jeremy, and yes. all the kids. You gotta let them answer first. Where should we go to find out about what is right and what is wrong? They need to answer. They need to answer. Where do we go? In the poo -poo Bible. In the Bibles, not in the nappies, in the Bible. Yes. That's where you find what is right and what is wrong. And if you are too young to read it, how can you know the Bible, Jeremy? 
You can ask your mommy to read, you can ask your daddy to read, you can ask grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, or big brother or big sister to read for you. Exactly. So boys and girls, that's it. That's our story for today about judges. Now you know how to find out what is right and what is wrong. And all rise in court. Bye guys. I'm stealing again. I'm going. <laughs>